In this video, which accompanies Lesson 8 in your lab manual, we are going to begin by reviewing the nerve plexuses that innervate the lower limb and the distribution of relevant nerves that originate from those plexuses. We'll then move on to identifying those nerves in two lab resources, the Flatman model of the nervous system and the leg model that we previously used to study muscles. So a quick review from some of our lecture material. A nerve plexus is a complete interwoven network of nerves that originates from anterior or ventral rami of the spinal nerves. Now there are four main nerve plexuses, the cervical plexus, the brachial plexus, the lumbar plexus, and the sacral plexus. And these are named for the regions or the vertebrae that they originate from. The lumbar and the sacral plexus originate from the lumbar and the sacral regions of the spinal cord. And the nerves that originate from these plexuses are what innervate the pelvic girdle and the lower limbs. So the lumbar plexus originates from the anterior rami of spinal nerves T12 through L5. As the rami travel away from the vertebral column, they initially split into anterior and posterior divisions, represented here by blue and yellow, respectively. And these divisions then undergo some additional splitting and merging to form several terminal branches, including the obturator nerve and the femoral nerve, which is, are the two that you are responsible for from this plexus. The uh, nerves of the sacral plexus, which originates from the anterior rami of L4 through S4, include the gluteal nerves and the sciatic nerve. And the sciatic nerve then gives rise to the tibial nerve and ultimately three fibular nerves. So let's review these branching patterns and locations on our flatman nervous system model first. Uh, but before continuing on, I want you to make sure that you've already labeled the nine nerves that you're responsible for in figure 8-2 of your lab manual. Once you have those completed, then go ahead and you can continue on with this video as we go through these models. So the first thing that we want to do is confirm that we can identify both the lumbar and the sacral plexuses. So we're going to go ahead and zoom in to that region of the spinal cord. You'll notice that this last rib that we have right here in this picture is our 12th rib. So the spinal nerve that's going to be coming out right below that is spinal nerve T12 or the 12th thoracic nerve. So then we can label everything else on the way down um, of our lumbar spinal nerves L1 through L5 and then the four sacral ones S1 through S4. As you hopefully remember, the lumbar plexus is going to originate from the anterior rami of L1 through L5 and then the sacral plexus from L5 through S4. So these are um, highlights that I have here are, are highlighting the regions where you're going to find those two plexuses. Now as we continue looking down this model at the nerves that are coming from the lumbar plexus and the sacral plexus, I do want to point out a feature of this flatman model, which is going to be true of not only the flatman nervous system, but also the flatman circulatory system that we'll cover later. In both the lower limb and the upper limb, as we'll see later, the right side of the body is going to be in anatomical position. So as we're looking at this leg, this is the anterior portion of that leg. Anytime you can't see a nerve, it is because it is behind that bone, it is posterior to that bone. On the other hand, if we look at the left leg, hopefully you'll notice that that leg is in a lateral rotation. So because of that, you aren't looking here at the anterior surface, you're actually looking at the medial surface of that leg. So in other words, then, if you were to look at some of these nerves that are off to this side of the bones, these are actually nerves that are in the posterior part of the leg. Uh, and then what you would see over here is going to be the anterior part of the leg. You can, for example, see the patella that's located right there, um, but you can't actually see the patella even on this leg because our cut is actually right through the middle of the bones. So that bone would be anterior essentially out of the screen at you. So keep that in mind that we are looking at a lateral rotation and thus the medial side of the leg in that left leg as we continue on. Let's start by focusing in that upper region that we have here. Um, I've again still highlighted the, th uh, the two plexuses for us. So we still have our lumbar plexus highlighted in red and then our sacral plexus highlighted in green. And if you were looking at these carefully, you should see three primary nerves coming out of this. Um, one of them I've highlighted here in blue, one of them in pink, and then a third one in green. Why don't you take a minute and see if you can identify those three primary nerves based on the sketches that you've made or the labeling of the figures that you've done in your lab manual. So start by noticing that both the blue one and the pink one are coming from ultimately that red region. So those are coming from the lumbar plexus. Now, as you recall, there were two 
uh, nerves that you needed to know from the lumbar plexus. First one being the femoral nerve and then also the obturator nerve. So how do you know which one of these is which? Uh, to start with, you'll notice that um, the, the blue one here is going in front of all of these bones, and the femoral nerve is the one that's going to be on the anterior side of the femur. Sometimes I'll ask students, if I was just to casually ask you to tap on your femur, you'd probably take your hand and tap on the anterior part of the thigh. You wouldn't tap on the posterior part of your thigh most of the time. Um, so think about that that's the region where you're going to find your femoral nerve. The obturator nerve travels through the obturator foramen of the os coxa, so you could, should see that it is going kind of through where you would approximate that area to be. Now, you can see that there's two nerves that are going through that same region, so if you were to initially ask yourself, well, which one of those is the obturator nerve, follow them back, okay? Follow it back towards the plexuses, and you'll see that this green one is going towards the sacral plexus, while this pink one is going towards the uh, lumbar plexus. The other thing that should give you a clue is that you'll notice how this green one comes out of that region of the pelvis and then heads posteriorly, hence why you can't see any more of it in this right leg. The pink one, on the other hand, comes uh, inferior to the pelvis and then starts heading to that medial side of the leg. That's where you're going to find all of those adductor muscles and those are muscles are all, for the most part, innervated by the obturator nerve. So then in some cases by process of elimination, the other one that you should be able to see with that green one is the sciatic nerve. Yes, you are also responsible for the inferior and superior gluteal nerves that are coming from the sacral plexus. However, those are not visible on this specific model. So the sciatic nerve is the only one that you need to be responsible for in the flat man. So now let's continue following the sciatic nerve. Uh, as you hopefully know, the sciatic nerve doesn't actually innervate any muscles. It's the largest nerve of the body, uh, but it has several branches to it. And the first division that you're going to see is this split that's right around or kind of just superior to the popliteal surface, which is why we're going to look at this left leg here that's rotated laterally because we can't see this posterior region on the right leg. And so you'll see one split here that I'm labeling in purple and one split that I'm labeling in orange. We're going to move down a little bit in this diagram so we can see the rest of those nerves. And as you can see, this purple one is going to continue on down in that posterior region of the leg all the way down. Um, however, the orange one you can see disappears in this uh, left leg. And keeping in mind that this is, again, a um, lateral rotation, if it disappears behind this bone, you, that really means it's on the lateral side of the leg. So basically we have this orange one that's going to the lateral side of the leg and this purple one that's staying in the posterior region of the leg. And that posterior one is going to be our tibial nerve while that orange one is then going to be our common fibular nerve. Now, as you may have noticed um, previously, anytime we've been using the term uh, label something as common and we've included common as an adjective, means typically means that there's going to be a further split. So just as the common iliac artery or vein was either a split or a merger of the external and internal iliacs. The common fibular implies that, well, this is going to split again as well into multiple fibular nerves. And so we'll go ahead and um, get to that in a bit. I did want to point out that, as I mentioned, how this common fibular disappears on the lateral side of that leg. Then we can see how, if we look over at the right leg, we can see where it reappears. And then it is going to have its additional splitting as well. Um, the common fibular nerve is going to split twice. One of its splits is going to head down the middle of the anterior part of the leg, which then we can see over on this side, on this left leg as well, it could be because of the way that it's rotated. And the other one that I have here in pink is going to stay more lateral, and so it's going to remain hidden on that rotated left leg. Hopefully you can identify from your patterns that that blue one is going to be our deep fibular nerve and the purplish one, pinkish purple one, is going to be our superficial fibular nerve. Let's continue then following these down a little bit further in the model. We can see how this tibial nerve is going to come all the way down up against the bones and kind of curve on down to the plantar side of the foot, um, or branches of it are going to come down to that plantar surface of the foot, while that deep fibular nerve is going to stay on the anterior surface. 
Uh, we can also see how um, on this right leg, again, we can see both the superficial and the deep remaining on this anterior uh, side of the leg. Uh, the superficial fibular is going to be the one that is primarily responsible for branching into the nerves that are found on the dorsal surface of the foot, even though you aren't for, um, responsible for any of these additional branches. Now we're going to move on from the flat man to our leg model that we have up. And rather than trying to look at this entire leg model at once because it is quite large, I'm going to go ahead and take it down off the stand and put it down on the table and we'll talk through all of these different um, individual nerves that we've just covered on the flat man. We're going to begin our tour of the lower limb nerves by, um, by looking at those that originate from the lumbar plexus. So we're going to be interested in looking right now at the femoral nerve and the obturator nerve. The femoral nerve is initially visible on this model right in between the psoas major and the iliacus superior to the inguinal ligament. And it initially looks to be by itself and once it goes underneath the inguinal ligament you'll see that it's now um, right next to two blood vessels, the femoral artery and the femoral vein. So all three of these structures, the two blood vessels and the nerve, all share a common name. Those are all the femorals. If we look towards the uh, medial part of the pelvic cavity, um, we're going to be able to find the obturator nerve, which is located right here. The obturator nerve travels through the obturator foramen. We can't see the obturator foramen itself right now because this muscle is covering it, but we can see how this nerve goes through that muscle, and if, you did, if this muscle were removed, you'd be able to see it going through the foramen itself. But this muscle is located on the more medial side of the limb and is ultimately innervating a lot of these medial adductor muscles, such as the gracilis, the adductor magnus, and the adductor longus. So those are the uh, nerves that are originating from the lumbar plexus. What about the sacral plexus? Let's turn around and look at the posterior side of this leg. We can't on this model see either of the gluteal nerves. Uh, but you still are responsible for knowing what muscles they innervate because those are visible. Uh, this muscle right here is the gluteus medius, and that is innervated by the superior gluteal nerve. And one of them uh, below it would be the gluteus minimus, which is also innervated by the superior gluteal nerve. Here is where the gluteus maximus was before I took it off, and that is innervated by the inferior gluteal nerve. Below that, because I've removed that muscle, you can see all five of those lateral rotators, the piriformis, gemellus superior, obturator internus, gemellus inferior, and quadratus femoris. And you'll see this nerve traveling superficial to all of these muscles, except for this one. And that's one of our clues that this is the piriformis, because it's the only lateral rotator here that um, the sciatic nerve is not superficial to. So this is the sciatic nerve. It is the largest nerve in the body. However, it does not innervate any muscles directly. Only branches of it are responsible for innervating muscles. So we're going to continue following that on down the posterior thigh. I've removed all of the hamstring muscles so you can see where this nerve would be located. And you'll notice that about two-thirds of the way down, just, super, uh, just superior to the popliteal region of the knee, we're going to see a split in this nerve. And so one of those splits is going to remain um, on the median uh, part of that leg. And it's going to travel right down the middle, just past the knee, and then continue traveling down the middle of the leg all the way down the lower leg as well, down towards the foot. That nerve right there, heading down the middle of the leg, is the tibial nerve. This nerve is responsible for innervating most of the posterior muscles of the thigh and the posterior muscles of the lower leg. So there are a lot of muscles that are innervated by that tibial nerve. This second nerve here, that comes that splits from the sciatic nerve starts heading more laterally and eventually even just past the knee will wrap around and you can see it even disappears behind this head of the fibula so as a little bit of a zoom in here you can see that nerve kind of disappearing just as it hits the head of that fibula that is the common fibular nerve so it makes sense that that one is heading off towards the lateral side of the leg fibula is the lateral bone of the leg that common fibular nerve is going to split into both a deep and a superficial fibular nerves. And so as you might expect, the deep fibular nerve is going to be located deeper in the leg relative to the superficial. So let's go ahead and turn this over. And as we're looking 
at this anterior part of the leg, you should notice two nerves that are coming out from this region. Um, we can't see the exact point that they split, but they do. Um, the common fibular splits just a little bit deep to where these two nerves are emerging. But as you can see, one of these nerves comes out very deep in the muscle and heads down here into the deep part of this anterior chamber. This is our fibula right here that's coming all the way across. This is the tibia. And then you can see in between them is that white interosseous membrane. So in addition to that nerve, there's also a blood vessel that is associated with it, and um, as well as two veins that aren't visible in this specific model, and those all form a neurovascular bundle. That nerve is the deep fibular nerve, which then you can probably deduce that the other nerve that's there is going to be the superficial fibular nerve. I know it looks like that uh, nerve just kind of disappears there, but that is only because I have removed two of our muscles. As a quick little reminder, this right here, again, our tibia, so this is gonna be our tibialis anterior. You can also see where that muscle inserts into the foot. And then these two muscles right over here, right where that superficial fibular nerve is going is our fibularis longus and our fibularis brevis. I have removed the extensor digitorum longus and the extensor hallucis longus. If I were to put those muscles back on, you would notice that that superficial nerve actually continues superficial to these anterior muscles. And eventually it is going to branch into branches you're not responsible for, but branches that are going to head over towards that dorsal surface of the foot. So that is the superficial fibular nerve. So a quick little review as we go back. Again, here is our superficial fibular nerve that we can see directly on top of some of these anterior muscles. If we remove those, we can also see the deep fibular nerve that's deep in that anterior compartment of the lower leg. If I turn this nerve, uh, turn this leg over, we can see the common fibular nerve, which is common to both the superficial and the deep. We have the tibial nerve that's going the entire length of the posterior leg just superior to the popliteal region, we're going to see that common fibular and the tibial nerve merge to form the sciatic nerve. And again, on the anterior and medial surfaces, we can see the obturator nerve that is traveling on the medial surface, the medial side of the os coxa, and ultimately will travel through that obturator foramen. And then on the more anterior side, we can see the femoral nerve, both superior and inferior to that inguinal ligament, and then continuing on down the anterior region of the thigh.